Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is a big day in the garden. This is our weekend gardening vlog, and we are going to be planting potatoes and tomatoes. Robert has already gotten started, as you can see, and he is getting busy here over here. What's kind of your strategy for that? Like, what are your what red is... potatoes first? Then, when I run out of the red, I'll put the yellow. Then I'll go with these right here. Yes. <laughs> these are to our uh, potatoes that Patty over at the Tinker's Wife mailed us. And I gotta open these and show you. She, it's raining a little bit, so I wanna make sure that the camera's being taken care of. And she packaged these up so carefully and amazingly. And she sent these over these little fingerling potatoes. How whoa, how cool are these? I can't even see, show you. But she just individually wrapped each one of these little fingerling potatoes in these paper towels. And yeah, very nice. See? It's just so sweet. I will link her channel down below. She has a lot of stuff, especially on Instagram. And she does a lot of, uh, she's just very knowledgeable with gardening and all that sort of thing. So I'll link her channel down below. Make sure you go check her out and send her some love. So, we're gonna be planting those. That's mostly gonna be what Robert's gonna be doing. Yep. So how are you How are you burying them and what are you doing with them? I'm just digging a shallow hole. About a foot apart. Okay. That's about all. That's it? Yeah. And then just gonna cover it up and oh, yeah. Yeah. hill it as the time goes on? Yep. Cool. So this is actually, this is the bed that he created last year. It's like Charles Dowding style. He laid down cardboard and just put compost and dirt on top of it and then planted in it last year. And these are potatoes that are left over. He did get a, you got a full crate, right? Last year. He got a full crate of potatoes last year and saved enough to make uh, seed potatoes this year. And so this is the second year, but he expanded it. It's much larger. Both of these are much larger and much longer than they were last year. And so, Hopefully he should get a much bigger return on his potatoes this year. <laughs> so that, uh, right, here we go. Putting those purple ones in here. Nice. Very nice. Black. It's purple, really dark. dark Let's put it right there. Right, time to change sides. One. Oops. <laughs> Get that in there. One. Eight. Looks like a total of eight. Nice. There we go. Just a little a light life covering. Lifetime of fingerling potatoes. Yep. Soil on top. That's it. <laughs> nice. So I'll just mound them as they grow up. Yeah. Next, I'm gonna finish these potatoes from seed. Over here in the far end, I planted some last week.
it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I agree. I'm not going to worry about having two and one. I just want to see what happens. See if it affects the growth in any way. Definitely. I mean, if you think about it, when you're planting those potatoes, there's a bunch of sprouts coming out each potato, so mm -hmm. should be fine. Does it say that that'll produce potatoes the first year? I'm not sure. It should. <laughs> That'll be nice. I need to do my research. Right back, I'm gonna get the African spinach, known as a B take who take who. This thing is just going to grow wild like a weed. So, bunching them really doesn't matter. That's it. So, they should sprout in about a couple weeks. If it's dry outside, then I'll have to water it every day. Since it's a tropical type plant, got it from a friend from Congo like three years back. I've been growing it every year, keeping the seed alive. So what I've been doing as it matures, it gets a little high about like this. Then what I do is I pluck the leaves off and I boil it just like regular spinach. Yeah, it tastes just like regular spinach. <laughs> Looks nothing like spinach, grows nothing like spinach. Yeah, can't tell the difference if you were blindfolded. <sighs> so what I'll do, the rest of that Bide Kute Ku seed, I think I'll just find convenient locations to put some of it. That's about it. <laughs> yep.
almost finished planting this bed here. And so I'm just gonna show you kind of real quick what we're doing with these. All we're doing is we're just digging a really deep hole, probably about, a, I'd say about a foot deep. We're filling it with some of this Job's Organic. There's nothing fancy about it. This is just what they had on sale at Tractor Supply. Last year on clearance, it was like $1.99 or something for this whole bag, so that's why I have this one. And then cracking an egg, putting it in the hole, filling it in. That's all we're doing, just rapid fire bust in through it as quick as you can and the deeper we put it in the hole the better the root structure is going to be so that's why we're digging the hole super deep oh and putting a little bit of dirt on top of the the fertilizer and the egg to kind of protect it protect the roots i guess there we go Really, that's all there is to it. It's super simple. At least the way we're doing it. So I am so unbelievably excited. We were actually able to get all of the tomatoes in the ground today. We planted 100, 104. I had 108 planted out, but I had misjudged the spacing on them. So we only got 104 in the ground. Well, not only 104, we got 104 plants in the ground. And I have them spaced out. This bed here is paste tomatoes. And then the, and then uh, the far one, is sauce tomatoes and then the one in between is half cherry and then half slicer so the main agenda around here is growing enough tomatoes hopefully to make it through the year on like sauces and things like that like spaghetti sauce and just uh, canned tomatoes basically so planted a bunch of those and then just for the more seasonal ones that we're going to eat in the season like the cherries and the slicers and stuff i just did one of uh, like the 12 foot beds of each one so um i'm gonna go inside i am going to eat a big old giant steak and i'm gonna edit some videos and probably watch a couple of lives tonight and then i'll bring back tomorrow where we will plant even more stuff so stay tuned as promised it is the next day here but we have had a slight change of plans i have yesterday i had mentioned that we were going to go ahead and transplant these into the actual garden bed down there and I just decided that I'm not going to do that today. What I would prefer to do is to transplant some of the larger ones, like we have these bachelor buttons and some calendula and a couple of marigolds and stuff that are uh, pretty well along in this small cell tray. These are the smaller like 128 cell 1020 trays. And so I'm going to go ahead and get these into the larger size pots here to let them grow a little bit. My reasoning behind that is, there's a couple reasons behind that that I've decided to change my mind. Uh, one is that I have been having a lot of slug issues and I need to go out there and do some slug hunting. And they have kind of annihilated a lot of my lettuce that I have out there. And I still have, I still have quite a bit of lettuce left, but they have definitely taken out probably at least half of the plants that I've done out there. And I don't want that to happen to all of these flowers because these flowers take a little bit longer to actually come to fruition. And I care about the flowers more than I do lettuce. So I'm going to go ahead and learn my lesson that I have uh, on the lettuce out there. And I'm going to let these guys get a little bit bigger as well as I need to do some hunting so hopefully I can diminish the population that I have out there. Another reason for my wanting to do it is that my back is just totally torn up right now and I, I'm having some lower back issues and I just, I don't particularly enjoy the prospect of being hunched over outside in the 
wet it's not raining yet it, it's not raining now it was earlier and it's just soaking wet out there i just don't feel, i just want to deal with it so instead we're going to take a different route and we're going to transplant these into pots and just let them grow for another week or two maybe even three however long i feel like it and then we'll actually transplant them outside uh, in a future vlog so if you're unfamiliar with how i actually transplant or how i the soil and the things that I like to do with transplanting these has brought me fairly good luck with these. I'm going to show you just real quick what I do. I will link the, the video where I have my actual potting, like starting mix, seed starting mixture. Yeah. Um, I'll link that one up there for you so you can check that out if you're interested. And then um, basically all I'm going to do with these, I'm going to make up new tags for each of these. I like to, I, I went and I ordered two more, 2,000 more tags. I've only had a, a one box of these and it's lasted me for a long time. And I just want to make sure that I have enough to tag everything. And I do reuse my tags and I, I'm not afraid to, I use a pencil and I just am not afraid to erase them and rewrite on there. Or I just, typically what I do with the pencils, I know a lot of people like to use Sharpies or pens or things that are more permanent. I prefer to use just a mechanical pencil. I find that that works the best. The The pencil stays on here for years. You don't have to worry about it coming off, rubbing off, erasing, anything like that. And you can just erase it when you want to erase it. And it comes right off and you can write on it. It's fantastic. Don't waste your money on all those garden pens or anything like that. Just get a mechanical pencil. You don't have a mechanical pencil, you can use an ink pencil, but, but at least on these particular tabs, tags that I use, which I will link down below. I got them from Amazon and I definitely recommend recommend them they let me show you so I just got these tags here and they come in this box a thousand to a box I use just a mechanical pencil and I like to use either this this kind of an eraser it's you know you want to make sure you're using the white erasers the pink ones don't work as well um, you can use them, but it's just not going to come off as cleanly as it does with these white ones. I don't know what the difference is between the pink and the white, but the white just seems to work better. Any user, I use this kind of one that has the, the retractable kind or just using like a regular one like this. And with these ones, these are the ones that I actually use. These are four inch and these are fantastic. They have like a texture to them. And um, so anyways, the texture kind of runs the uh, the lead pencil down a little bit more than um, like a smooth one would. So I just recommend using a mechanical pencil because then it doesn't really matter. You don't have to sit there and sharpen it a lot. But I did use regular uh, sharpening pencil for a long time before I finally switched over. And also I recommend getting the 0.7 millimeter. The 0.5 breaks, breaks easily. So anyways, that's how I do it. And then with these, you can see we got tons and tons and tons. Of, let me hide my face so you can see the root structure. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just tilt it. Okay, so the best way to get a start out of these things is a chopstick. You wanna find the right size chopstick? Chopstick, obviously anything too wide won't work. So all I do, you just poke it, right? That's it. So we're gonna fill this up with my starting mixture. Depending on what type of thing that you're transplanting, there are two categories of things that you transplant, tomatoes and everything else. <laughs> and this isn't everything else, obviously, because we're planting, this one is bachelor's button. So we're gonna plant this one. I'm gonna fill it up. If you're interested in how I up pot trans tomatoes, I will link that video up here as well. It is very similar, but you just bury it as deeply as possible in there. So which one did I do? I think it was this one. <laughs> I think I poked this one out. Yep, that one comes out easily, so that's probably it. Okay, so with this one, I filled it up with the starting mixture here, and then we're gonna put it in here even. We don't wanna bury it too deep. So we're just gonna put it in there pretty even and kind of push it down. Or push, I'm pushing down the, um, the plug as well as the surrounding soil, just so that it's kind of even, and then that's about the deep, the depth that I have it. So that's all we're gonna do with that. And then we're gonna take some vermiculite. There's several different types of vermiculite. This is kind of the, the finer vermiculite. And this will help prevent against any, I mean, it doesn't really matter because I'm not having it in the house, but fungus gnats 
as well as any of like the green kind of mold or not mold but moss type stuff so that's all I do with it and then you just take your your uh, marker here put the tag in there grab a tray I'm not fully prepared but who is and into our tray and that's all there is to it so we're just going to do that same exact thing over and over and over again about 108 more times and then <laughs> and then i'll bring you back probably this evening i think this might take a little while because i'm in no hurry whatsoever i'm going to take kind of a, a relaxing but still productive day today and uh just to kind of relax my back and to be able to kind of recuperate from the mass craziness of the last couple of weeks that i've had it's been a really busy and it's kind of it's a bit of a lull so i'm going to take advantage of it <laughs> so i will bring you back this evening and show you something pretty pretty darn exciting at least for me and for anybody who's not a vegetarian or vegan you'll probably be excited by it too today is finally the day that i am gonna actually start the incubator okay i haven't even turned this thing on yet and i'm just i'm super nervous about it i don't know why I'm making it such a big deal in my head. So I have a bunch of should be fertilized French cocoa Moran eggs and I'm pretty darn excited to, to start being a little bit more self-sufficient and be able to start um, hatching out our own eggs. So I need to get this little Okay, there we go. Okay, so basically we need to just fill these channels up with some water. I did say to do like between a quarter and a half of a cup and that was definitely more than that. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. There we go. Okay. So now we have that thing on there. And we're going to put the turner. There we go. Now we need to put the eggs in here and we need to put them pointy side down. And these eggs are, I'm sure some of them are not gonna hatch because some of them are pretty darn old. I've been saving these for like three weeks. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be okay. Cause I only have two of these hens and for a portion of this time, one of them wasn't laying cause she was brooding. It took me a while to actually break her of it, but I finally did. So now I'm getting two of these eggs every day. So I don't really know how it's gonna turn out, but we're gonna find out. And we're putting them in pointy side down. I can't remember if I already told you that just now. And some of these eggs are a little bit dirty. Um, I just, I don't know if I'm supposed to use them or not. So I'm keeping them kind of further away from the other ones, but Find out. Perfect. Okay. So we got the water in and we got the eggs in. Now, what we need to do is turn them, is uh, get them plugged in. So I'm realizing that I put this thing on here uh, backwards. So I'm just gonna have to, it's just the way that the outlet is gonna work. So I can't actually flip this thing around. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. Right now it's saying it's 74 degrees in there. It says it's low. This thing needs to get up to temperature. And then it's going to, it looks like it's just doing its thing. This thing comes preset at what I need it for. So it's 21 day cycle. It's the, the humidity is starting to rise. So we're just gonna let this thing go. And I'm super duper excited. I'm super nervous about it. But of course, as the weeks go on, I will bring you along and show you kind of the progress. Hopefully next week we'll be able to candle these and see if any of them have actually started to grow. And the ones that don't, I'd say after like two weeks, I think, we want to toss them and then at the two-week point I think that's when we put them on lockdown so as this pro as this process 
progresses, I will bring you along in future weekly vlogs that we're doing on here and I'll show you the process. We'll be able to candle these and I'll show you them and hopefully we'll get some that will actually hatch and I'll bring you along and show you those. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this weekly gardening vlog and if you do, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.